All right, so you guys know how sad I was about the Quinjet change, which broke the She-Hulk double down zoo style deck that I had been focusing on. And I don't know who created this, Somebody in my Discord posted this, said that a Korean player played this in a tournament and they were able to win the entire thing. And so I decided to jump in, try it out. With the over the air patch yesterday, we have a lot less Sandman in the meta. It's just not quite as strong as it used to be. And so that opens up the possibility for Flood a bit more consistently. And so this deck is a Moon Zoo. It wants to double down on your She-Hulk and then flood the board. Sometimes that means doing She-Hulk skipping on five. Sometimes that means dropping some of your power using Beast to bounce your cards back in so that you can explode a huge Hitmonkey onto the board. Sometimes you're gonna play Hitmonkey early, bounce it back in, then duplicate it to have two Hitmonkeys that you can throw out. Um, just so many possible play lines compared to how restrictive it used to be, where it had to be, you pretty much relied on always getting She-Hulk. If you didn't get She-Hulk, it was very hard to get enough power on the board to win. This version uh, helps alleviate that quite a bit. Now, one of the more unique texts that I've seen in this is Rogue. And I have to say, I have been loving having Rogue. We all know that we're in a much more heavy ongoing meta. And so we're seeing things like Hawk, like Dino, like Null, um, just Patriot, all kinds of ongoing cards. And Rogue can take those and swing them back in our favor. Instead of just copying them like Super Scroll, instead of taking them completely off the board like our Enchantress, which is a solid option. But I think the advantage that Rogue has in this matchup or in this particular deck is that she's cheap. If we have Quinjet and we double down on our Rogue, there are some games where we're going to drop two Rogues to still two ongoing abilities that the opponent is pretty set in themselves having. And then all of a sudden we can use that as a tempo advantage to swing the game back in our favor. And so for five energy, we can drop two rogues. Sometimes we're going to double it, just drop one for three, one for two later. Sometimes we'll just drop the second one for three as well. But overall, I have been loving this list. I have a 67% win rate over 30 games and a average cube gain per game of 0.74. And so this has been absolutely putting in some incredible work. Um, you don't have to worry so much about Killmonger because a lot of your burst is going to be on the last turn of the game. The biggest downside or detriment to this deck, as far as I can tell, is lockdown capabilities. So Storm is kind of can be tough to overcome. A Professor X is very detrimental. Spider-Man can be very detrimental if you don't anticipate it, if you don't see it coming and play your cards there appropriately ahead of time. And so overall, I really enjoyed this list. I didn't run into any particular matchup that just felt like I couldn't win. But within that same breath, I'm not seeing a lot of Galactus. I'm I'm not in a portion where I'm seeing a lot of Galactus. If you do, you're going to have to rely on Iceman to disrupt their ramp components. You're going to have to rely on your Rogue to steal their Null because we did drop Shang-Chi from this version because we're not seeing as many big boys as we used to. We used to be every single game was almost guaranteed to have something that you're going to be able to hit with Shang-Chi. With Shuri dropping off in popularity, we don't see those big cards as often or as frequently, at least not as early as we used to. And so we're going to go ahead and jump over into a couple of games. I hope you guys enjoy. All right. Next up, first up, we have Meow. Um, the first location is Monster Metropolis. We have the Iceman. We have Hood, but I'm going to prioritize disrupting them a little bit earlier, just in case maybe Bar with No Name comes up somewhere. We want to be able to have that Hood or that resource to be able to utilize. And so if not, then we can go maybe... Uh, that's not great. The Mysterio is not great. Let's just go Hood this turn, which doesn't feel incredible. But we're going to go Hood this turn. We're going to Beast Bounce it back into our hand on the following turn. And then we can go from there. Now, this looks like a either a junk or a Professor X lock style. Either a junk or a Professor X style uh, Thanos list. So I have to be careful of that. Let's go ahead and bounce these back in. All of them are going to be free next turn, which is great for us. We're just looking for a potential. Uh, we want to be cautious of a potential Spider-Man, a potential Professor X. Um, even a Spider-Man into Professor X could be pretty detrimental. And so we want to play with that in mind knowing we may not have all of the spaces that we need or want to to play into. Now we have, wow, an explosive, the explosive uh, last turn right now, which I kind, of, I kind of want to go with. If we don't get restricted by any means, 
we can skip on turn five and just blast the board. Uh, like we would fill it up after that point, which is just insane, right? We're gonna do the hood. We get a, another demon. Do we skip here? I mean, if we play She-Hulk, all, all that it really... So let's make sure we can play everything. So two, three, four, five, six. Ooh. So we need to play... Uh, yeah. We need to play She-Hulk. But where do we play She-Hulk? Let's play She-Hulk into mid. And that leaves us with two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> we can explode the board. Now, we're going to do the She-Hulk. If a Professor X, if a Spider-Man, if a Snap comes down, we have to take that with a grain of salt, knowing that they probably have some means to lock us in. Um, but we don't know that. With everything on board, this could be just an ongoing version. Uh, something that runs like a Valkyrie is pretty possible as well. And I haven't played Meow before, so I don't know exactly what kind of deck they're running. Maybe they, maybe I have played them before and they just changed their name. That's that's always a possibility as well. They didn't immediately snap after they saw the She-Hulk, so we're okay there. Um, we just this is just such an explosive hit monkey play that I just I just I just want to see it. I just want to see it pay off. They do Time Stone. Oh wow, Time Stone, Power Stone, and then the Soul Stone. Wild. Okay. So Thanos is powered up, but if they do just Thanos this turn, there's no way that they can keep up with how much we're going to just explode on the board. Um, I don't know that we beat this left lane. Thanos comes down. He's 20. He goes up to 40 because of the throne room. I, we're, we're never going to beat 20. We're never going to play more than 10 cards, right? I mean, maybe. <laughs> Probably not, but maybe. Uh, let's do the Hit Monkey into Sacred Timeline. We're going to do a real, real Mysterio here. The fake one goes here and here. And so then we go here, 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 and here. I mean, <laughs> how many cards is that? Um, well, That's a lot. That's for sure. It's a lot. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a 14 power Hit Monkey. 14 power um we still have a chance to lose this lane if they do thanos here but then i think oh wait what was the last card we played oh okay guess let's double stack in the left lane just in case they don't play anything here that way we just we can uh, outpower them now if they really force in this left lane oh no i i skipped one of the mysterios right no maybe not okay they do have the 40 power thanos in the left lane you have the Ant-Man in the right lane. Our hit monkey is going to be massive, massive 14 power hit monkey. The Thanos, he can be there all by himself. He is sitting upon his throne. The uh, the, the mad Titan, the mad King, the, the one who cannot be stopped. Um, he can have that one. We'll just, we'll just make do with the other two instead. We will go ahead and take the two cubes. That is just like, how can you even calculate against that? That's just so much. <laughs> that you're putting onto the board on one turn. It's nuts. We're going to go ahead and take it. Let's jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have Eugenia. I don't know about Eugenia, but I don't know. I didn't have, you know, sometimes you start talking. You don't have anywhere to go. You just hope you find yourself in the end. We're going to go ahead and skip here. Clear up the collapse mine. We prioritize the Iceman. One, because it was the only one cost we had, but also the, that early disruption is so solid. Some decks, it just breaks them. Sometimes it just breaks their, their main combo line, and then they're just forced to retreat. So if we so if we can play it, we typically prioritize that. Let's go with the Carnage in the right lane. We're going to do Sunspot into Morag so that he can soak a bit. Next turn, depending on what we draw, maybe it's a Moon Girl. Maybe we play Moon Girl to double down on the Rogue. Maybe we use Beast to bounce the Iceman back in, add a little bit more disruption into him. So they run an Iceman as well. It hits our Beast. We can still Beast this next turn if we want to. Tinker's Workshop gives us an extra energy. How do we want to play? Kind of want to bluff them. We're gonna do we're gonna do Quinjet and then Moon Girl. We're gonna let we're gonna make them think that we have two She Hulks when we don't. Uh, we're gonna do this. We're gonna snap into next turn. We're gonna pass into turn five. Or in five into six, and uh, we're gonna hope for the best. The crazy probably but it work probably maybe there's a possibility that it works right 
It's not a great one, um, but it's still a possibility. Let's do the hood into mid. How committed are we to this bit? Pretty committed. Let's go ahead and snap. We're going to play the hood and we're going to soak. And um, we'll see. We'll see if they stick it out. We have... Uh, it's, it's not great. Uh, I wanted to copium and say we had some okay plays. We, we really don't. We can do rogue plus rogue plus demon on the last turn. Which is a fair amount of power. If they happen to play like an ongoing card here. Or maybe... If they happen to play an ongoing card here. We can, we can utilize the second rogue to our advantage. I think they're trying to get a read on what we're what what we have or why why we snapped because we're reckless because we're reckless um we wanted to make it look like we set up the the she hulk play even though we didn't have it and fortunately for us they bought it that we maybe could have pulled this one out not not likely but we maybe there was a, a small slim shot if they didn't have great cards but we did get them to buy our story. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Crouching Donut Hidden Calorie. The first location is Murder World. Um, so we're going to uh, play away from there. We may play our hood into that location. Nope, never mind. Turns out we're going to play our hood into Gamma Lab. We let our sunspot be, right? We don't, we never bounce back, bounce it back in. Let's go hood. We're going to generate a, a demon. Maybe we play that demon into Gamma Lab as well. Now, the... Partial issue that I have with this version is sometimes locations like Monster Island. What? Oh no, that's not good. That's not good at all. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Well, um, the partial issue that I have with um, the partial issue that I have with this list or this version is that sometimes you are gonna want to have Shang Chi for like Monster Island, Gamma Lab, because now if they have Shang Chi, this lane is just in their favor there's not much we can do now they did zabu and into a mr negative so i don't think they're gonna have shang chi so at least this one is fair game right now we have the rogue which is gonna allow us to steal their iron man their inverted iron man that they're gonna place right here i'm calling it right now they're gonna place it right here right here in this lane and uh we'll be able to steal that along with playing a few of our other cards let's go let's go hmm yeah, let's do it. Let's do Mysterio, Hit Monkey. We're going to Beast bounce it back in next turn, most likely. Maybe we do Demon plus Beast um, to be able to get the resources for free so that we can do an explosive last turn on top of having the Rogue at our disposal. They haven't played anything into Space Throne. The good thing with a Mr. Negative deck is a lot of times they don't have really high, high reach. So a lot of times it is like those inverted cards. So at max around six is what you typically will find. One, two, three. Nah. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to skip here. We're going to let our She-Hulk soak so we can just play it here. We can play the demon here. We can absorb their, um, we can absorb their big power in mid. If they play it this turn, the problem with, oh, see, that's, you remember a little bit earlier in the, in the recording where I said, I'm calling it now. It's not the inverted version, but it's the Iron Man nonetheless. And we have priority, so we're going to steal it before a Mystique comes down. They are not going to know what hit them. We're going to sp we're gonna splash the left lane. We're going to dominate the middle. And we're going to, hopefully, I think we can swing the right as well. I think this is going to be a three-lane win. I'm not going to snap on them because I, I don't want them to retreat. Because I think we have like a very clear advantage here. Um, unless they have a Shang-Chi, which would be just wild in a, in a Mr. Negative deck. And so the Mystique copies nothing. Uh, the Hawk does win them the Space Throne, which is good. That's huge. But we have a little bit too much power in the left lane, I think. Uh, after our Mysterio reveals, we do. That was almost a clutch Ironheart, but we are able to hold it down. Oh, we almost held down the right lane as well. Um, had we skipped, we could have held that one down. But we are able to hold down two out of the three. We take the two cube win. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have D Money himself. Um, the D Money. I don't know if he recognizes our new name. I haven't been able to stream. Just work has been absolutely brutal. Uh, I'm covering for somebody who is out on maternity leave. And so I'm getting a lot of extra like set in stone meetings. So I can't really even work ahead and work after. And so it's been really hard to stream. I'm not sure that D Money even recognizes our name. We might need to go back to the old reliable TLSG. So we have 
Kamartaj is the far left lane. They have Sunspot, which is kind of interesting that they played it over here. Maybe, I don't know. I would say maybe Adam Warlock, but that's not gonna get it. That's not gonna give them the lead. Morbius, so it's a discard deck. Ooh, discard decks are brutal. Um, like they're very straightforward, very easy to read, very easy to interpret, but they are monstrous. Um, I don't wanna fill up my hand with more junk. We actually have just about everything we need, right? Let's go Carnage. We're gonna do Moon Girl in mid. That's gonna give us a She-Hulk. Now nah, we're gonna go right. I still want a chance to draw Quinjet is the only reason we're going into the Forge. Um, I also want a chance to draw Rogue to steal their Morbius. That would just win us that location altogether. Ah, so I don't think I can afford. Ooh, okay. Swordmaster does the Stature and the Apocalypse. So we can expect maybe, uh, maybe a Black Bolt at some point. Let's go Moon Girl, three, four, five. That copies the She-Hulk and the Hit Monkey. We will be able to skip. We will be able to skip turn five and then just blast uh, a ridiculous amount onto the board. Is it going to be able to beat their Apocalypse, their Morbius, all of that just insane high roll that they have? Probably not, but I'm willing to try. I'm willing to stick it out. We're willing to try. Let's go ahead and skip here. They played Dracula in mid, which is huge. Um, that means that their Apocalypse is going to be nasty. Uh, they have the Moon Knight, which forces us to discard uh, Sentinel. No, one of our hit monkeys. Oof. That's unfortunate. And Sentinel. Okay, so the Sentinel read was correct. It was just a little bit delayed. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and go with... How are we going to play this one? We have the She-Hulk, the Mysterio, which goes here, here, and here. The She-Hulk, and then the Hit Monkey. Does that win for us? I don't know. Probably not. But it's worth a shot. I think they probably have, what, MODOK here? MODOK goes in this lane. They absorb with Dracula in mid. So MODOK would discard just a, an absurd amount of cards. But it's 8 power, and it's a set 8 power here. I think we have a shot. We're going to try. Let's go ahead and lock it in, see if we get the 4. See if we get the, the right read for the 4. They do play one card. Oh, it's the Apocalypse. They just outright play the Apocalypse in the left lane. Oh, no. Does our double power to hit monkey beat that? I don't think it does. 16 power is nasty. We get a lot of cards on the board, but can the double trigger here beat it? It's gonna be close, but we get... Oh, my gosh. What is this game? We get, the, uh, we get more advantage out of Kamartage than they do. They made a solid read with the Apocalypse, knowing that we were going to just ignore the Lechukia. Had they played the Apocalypse and stacked it into this lane, they would have had that one locked down. He had a way to win it. This was a bold call. I'm just glad we were able to hang on. Let's go ahead and take the four cubes and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Thanos Solverstein. Um, the first location is Death's Domain. Not great for us. We don't have any way to actively play for it. Um, so we'll see. Maybe they'll change that with Reality Stone? We can hope. We can hope that they do. We do have She-Hulk and Moon Girl, so at the very least we can double down and, uh, oh my gosh, and burst that out onto the board. Miniaturized Lab is so restrictive for us. I don't know. We're going to play Carnage uh, just so that it's out on the board. Really, the main priority of Carnage is to clear up those those like junk decks. It's to clear up the negative hood and just create extra space for ourselves. So they change mid with the Reality Stone. We actually get Wakanda Embassy, which is going to give us more us more benefit than it does them because we can, of course, double down on our on our resources. Part of me wants to play Beast this turn, but I also don't want it taking up space for the Moon Girl. And Lemuria, actually, I think this is the only time I've ever been able to say this, but Lemuria is actively working in our favor here. We can play the Beast. Next turn we do... Actually, let's do Beast to the right. Next turn we do Moon Girl. That will double down on three cards. We'll still Beast the, uh, the Quinjet back in. So we need to play Beast into mid. Because if we could have capped out our hand, Beast wouldn't be able to pull the cards in, and we'd be, we would be set. Since it can, and we're not going to be able to completely cap out and we're not going to be able to completely cap out our hand. We can play the Moon Girl, and uh, we'll just Beast Bounce the Carnage back in and just hold it. And so we do get a massive 
in surge or influx or surge of power with the hit monkey. We're gonna actually, I guess the, the ordering was important, right? So it was always gonna beast bounce these back in. And I'm so glad we had initiative there because they played a Cosmo. The Mr. Fantastic here is actually a huge target for our rogue. So we can do rogue to steal either the Soul Stone or the Mr. Fantastic. We'll be able to play a couple of hit monkeys, a couple of she-hulks, and it is all pending this turn. They play the Devil Dino in the right lane, which is massive. That is a lot of power. Do we go super cheeky here? Do we go super cheeky and do a double rogue? That's going to pretty much take up almost all of our play around potential. But it wins us the left lane. I can't believe I can't believe what I'm going to say, but I don't think I'm going to play I don't think that I'm going to play hit monkey. I mean, we have just massive hit monkeys. Wait, why is why are they both two? No, this one's one. We have the massive hit monkeys, one, two, three, four, but it's not bigger than 11 power and stealing Mr. Fantastic wins us the death domain. This is a, I think a more structurally sound play line. They do play Ant-Man in the right lane. <gasps> Blue Marvel is huge. We now have a 30, okay. Blue Marvel is decent for us to grab. Can we get Mr. Fantastic so that we win the left lane? Mr. Fantastic for the win. We do steal both of their big ongoing abilities we smash out just an absurd amount of power in the right lane oh my gosh had we stolen soul stone though had we stolen soul stone instead of the mr fantastic we would have gained an extra three here so it would have brought us up to eight it would have brought them down by four down to seven so even if we had hit the soul stone instead of the mr fantastic to win death's domain we still would have been able to swing it by winning this one and this one so it, it looked like a lucky a lucky grab, but I think regardless of how it turned out, we would have been able to win. Soul Stone plus Mr. Fantastic, we would have won this one and this one. Blue Marvel plus any combination with the two rogues is insane. Um, we will absolutely take the two cubes, and that is I don't think we can go up from here. The last two games were absolutely phenomenal. That is where we're gonna go ahead and end this video. This deck is this deck is it. This deck is so solid. Now that we're not seeing much Sandman, you might still see some um, on those games. You may have to retreat uh, graciously, but if not, ah, this is so solid. The amount of burst that it has is just absurd we are going to go ahead and take the two cubes i hope that you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure to give it a like and a comment down below and as always this has been tlsg later guys